This is Excel 2016, Module 7, Part 5. We are looking at validation rules, and with this section of Module 7, we are going to be re working with list type rules. So let's get back into our winter workbook. And as you can see, we've already reviewed simple rules and entering information with insert messages as well as error alerts. So the first one we're going to look at is in B5. We are going to be creating several different uh, validation rules using lists. The first ones, we are going to look at creating a list using a range of cells that is predefined somewhere else in our workbook. It needs to be a static area that does not change. So for example, this youth information over here, these lists that show the user the options they can choose from, those do not change. So it doesn't matter whether I typed in a youth name of Kristen Russell or Joe Smith, that person can choose from these four activities and these four grade levels and then these five shirt sizes. Okay, I'm not going to come over here and change the data when I'm entering information for each individual youth. This is a static list that is there to display for the person using the workbook to show them the options. That's what you need to create a source that is predefined. So let's click on B5 and we're going to go on to data, validate, data validation. And I always like to start on my settings tab. So I'm going to say that this particular field must be a from a list. Again, we've got the ignore blanks. If you want to see a drop down that shows the options, so the user will get an arrow, a drop down arrow, and they can use that to choose from, you want this box checked. The source as you'll see in a few minutes, we can type in options if there are a few, or as we're going to do right now, we can use that static area that doesn't change and select our options from there. So our choices for the activity are going to be in D4 through D7. Once we have the list in, then we can go in and enter the other items. So if we had an input message, we might say activity, and perhaps we would tell them to click the arrow and choose from the list. We're going to then go over to the error alert. Now this time we are going to say this is a stop. If we don't have a valid activity then we do not understand what the student or the youth is registering for. So it has to be a valid option. So we are going to come over to our title and we are going to type invalid activity. 
And then we're going to give the user some instructions. So first of all, we're going to tell them an invalid activity has been entered. Now you might notice I didn't uppercase the A. So if I didn't correct that, then if, you, if this were your SAM homework, it would mark it wrong. Okay, so make sure you even watch things like upper and lower, punctuation, and spacing. So the next sec, sec, uh, sentence would say click, whoops, click, cancel, comma, and then use the arrow to select a valid activity period when I click OK you'll notice my screen tip just like before but now I get this drop-down arrow so you can see the drop-down arrow includes the information that is listed under the activities where we selected the source Let's go ahead and hit escape to get rid of that. You could check it and see if I said, all right, this is activity number two. Notice I get the error message that pops up. Now the reason that I want to make sure that I have my instructions on there is because if I click retry, and then say, okay, I should click on the arrow, it's going to keep giving me that error message because bad data is in the cell. So it's not going to let me click on the arrow. You need to click cancel and then use the arrow, which is why we gave that instruction in the error message. So let's do two more of those list types of validation rules. One for the grade and one for the shirt size. So we're going to go to grade, which is B6, and click on data validation. I always like to start on the settings so I can define my rule and then give the messages that apply to it. So I'm going to go to, again, say that it is a list. I do want the drop down. Then it wants to know where the source is, and it's going to be E4 through 7. My input message is going to say grade as the title, and it's going to say click the arrow to select the grade period again I'm gonna have another stop alert I need to know what grade the student is in and the title is gonna say invalid grade and I'm gonna have a similar error message that we had before it's gonna say an invalid grade has been entered and then it's going to say click cancel and then use the arrow to select the grade. Now I want to point out a couple things. Again, notice we get our screen tip we click the arrow and we can make a choice. To test this rule, we would want to try to say they're in fifth grade, just typing a number. And when I do that, you can see I get the error message. If I click retry, remember, same thing. If I try to click, it's going to give me the error. 
However, if I typed in G5, notice because that is on the list, it accepted it. Okay, so if you type in something that matches the list, it will accept it even if you do not choose it from the arrow. Now let's do the same list for the shirt size. So again, we're going to click on B7, go up to Data Validation, and we're going to go to Settings. This is a list. Whoops. List. We do want the drop down. My source is F4 through 8. And again, you want to make sure that this area that you're choosing as your source is not data that would be changing regularly as you're typing additional information in. Needs to be in a static area that's pretty much unchanged. We're going to go to input message and we're going to say shirt size as the title. The input message will say click the arrow to select a shirt size and the error message is going to again be a stop and it's going to say invalid shirt size with a very similar error message and invalid shirt size has been entered Click Cancel, and then choose, oh, and then use the arrow to select the shirt size. Oops, misspelled shirt. So notice how easy it is to get a spelling error on there. Remember that Sam will count the entire question wrong if you have typing errors. So you can see now with these three, we have created drop-down lists using our list over here as the source for each one of those. The next type of list that we're going to create is one where we can actually type in the options ourselves. So we're going to go down to B8 and go to Data Validation. This time on the settings, I'm going to set it to List. And instead of giving it a source somewhere else, there are only two choices here, yes or no. So I'm simply going to type those in. Type in yes, comma, then your space, and no. Now, you want to make sure you type them out because our if statement that uses that field is looking for the value of yes. If it sees a value of Y, then the if statement will not recognize that this is a Rockport resident. And that's why we would want to use a list instead of just letting the user type it in, because they might think it's okay to just type a Y or an N and not realize that that is going to mess up your formula later on. So we're going to again put in an input message for Rockport Residence is our title. And the input might say 
click the arrow and choose a response. Now the error alert, we do want this to be a stop because if they don't enter this field in correctly, our if statement will not work. So we are going to say um, invalid Rockport residence. And our error message would be very similar to the others. An invalid Rockport residence resident option was selected, entered. Click cancel and then use the arrow to select the response. And again, the reason we have to have this here is because if I just type a Y and I didn't get this error message, then it would no longer calculate this discount correctly because the function is looking for the value of the entire word spelled out, yes. So I want to make sure that they go ahead and click and choose it typed out, yes or no. You want to make sure that you test each validation rule. So if you're only accepting dates, then you want to make sure that you only accept dates. Notice if you type in the information, if I typed in an M, it will accept that even if um, I don't select it from the drop down. Okay. So that is working with our validation rules. And again, those can be used to try to help ensure that correct and valid information is entered into our worksheet. For example, with our Rockport, this ensures that we're going to have the full word typed out so that our function our if statement down here will work correctly to give those people a discount. We go ahead and save our work. And when we come back, we're going to look at how you can protect your workbook, your worksheet, and how you can encrypt your files. So this way, if you spent all this time entering all the formulas and you want to make sure someone else cannot change them, we can show you ways that you can help protect the information.